Welcome back to Video Therapy. I'm your host, Forty. So why don't we start off with the meme of the day. So, all about artist life, right? This is what uh, my friends think I do. Always painting nude girls, right? Not always, but sometimes. Uh, what my mom thinks I do, out in nature, painting the field, etc., right? What society thinks I do, holding exhibitions and living that artist's dream, right? What my professor thinks I do, just finger painting. <laughs> what I think I do, uh, creating masterpieces, right? And then what I really do, just looking for work. Anyways, today's video is kind of spurred because I recently went out to to bid on a commission. Um, this company was the company CEO was looking for a piece for his beautiful office. Mind you, they have they are in a beautiful building, and the guy wanted a two meter by one and a half meter piece. That's like eight foot by five foot or something like that. Anyways, a really large piece. Materials alone on a piece like something like this would run probably, I don't know, three, four hundred euros. And then they told me after I met with them for about 45 minutes, I asked all the questions, the right questions. So, you know, what color scheme, what's matching in the office? Are they going for something contrasty? Or are they looking for something to complement? What kind of feelings are you looking to portray, etc.? What are the main colors that you like represented, etc.? And then they told me that their budget was 700 euros. Let's put that into perspective. Let's say that the material cost on that piece is 400 euros. That leaves 300 euros for your time. I imagine that that would take three to four weeks. Let's just say 120 hours, right? Which includes uh, the mock-ups for the piece, sending it to the client, meeting with the client, then starting the painting, then uh, varnishing it, protecting it, and delivery, right? At least 120 hours, right? If you were paid a minimum wage of eight euros an hour, that would equate to 960 euros, is that right? 120, yeah, 960 euros. And these guys were looking to pay 400 for a piece that size. I tried to explain to them, I said, well listen, the materials are this price, and then the reality is when you are, first of all, the way we got good at our craft was trial and error, years of mastering our technique, et cetera, et cetera, and you want to pay us minimum wage? The reality is minimum wage is held for people who don't even try or they're just out of high school or in high school and they're not even looking to have a specialty. The reason you pay doctors is because they go and they spend time learning all the different possibilities that will work with and cure your ailments or to be able to work on you and prescribe you medicines, etc. And the reality is sometimes they prescribe you medicines that, that don't work and then they prescribe you another one. It's a guessing game sometimes, right? Well, we create artwork and sometimes they don't work out. And when it doesn't work out, that cost of materials is then absorbed by us, right? So anyways, that kind of, that is the reason that this created this video. And let me jump into it. This is about the artist life demystified seven things that you should know if you're an artist or you know an artist or you work in art. And when I say art, I don't just mean paintings. I'm referencing paintings in this video because I paint, but I also work in music, I work in video, and I believe that art is anything in the creative field. You could work in in music, you could be an actor, you could be a performance artist, you could be a tattooer, you could, anything in the creative field, I consider art. So, why don't we begin? Number one, we're not always brimming with creativity. Sometimes we don't feel like doing whatever our craft may be, right? Sometimes we still need to do it, but and what does that mean? It means that it comes in waves, at least for me it does. There are some moments where I have so many ideas in my head that I need to get down and out of me that it's just overflowing with creativity. And if you threw anything in my direction, I would have 40 answers or resolutions to any problem. Luckily, I, I, I'm very creative and it doesn't turn off so much for me. But when it does, then you look for things to bring the creativity back. For me, it could be going to the beach and going paddle boarding. It could be going to a museum and seeing different, different art from other artists. It could be, it, it, 
I think I take inspiration everywhere. And so sometimes when I'm out with friends and we're talking, my mind drifts because I'm looking at some patterns or colors that are either on some texturized wall or, or, or whatever. And I think we take inspiration from everything. Let's move on to number two. Number two is we experiment and we fail a lot. I have a great example. So just this weekend, I was working on a few pieces, creativity brimming to the rim, right? And I don't know why, but I was working on one of these canvas boards and I, I made this piece, which is pretty cool actually, right? And I did his hair with a liquid acrylic technique and I masked it off. And when I cut the masking tape, I wasn't careful because this is MDF, particle board. And I didn't think, oh, I'm gonna cut through the canvas and it's gonna lift. And that's exactly what it did. If you look right here, between his hair and the head, it's separated. That, you can see the particle board there. So what I've done to fix it is I've used Mod Podge and I've put a layer over. I'm going to put another layer and hopefully it seals everything to paint in place and then I can repaint over it. However, it ended up turning out really cool. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do it on another piece. So I took a canvas and here we go. Let's see, can you guys see this? Yeah. So this piece right here is uh, almost done. I've got to do his shirt on the bottom here, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. So I guess what I mean by that is like, uh, we fail, it costs us money. And this uh, MDF board, it's not gonna be sold, right? Uh, I have a friend who said he wants it anyway, so probably in the next piece that they buy, I'll give it to them. But, um, this is part of our life. Failure is part of our life. And that's okay. We learn from our mistakes. I promise you, I will never cut a particle board with such uh, vigor, right? I guess I just wasn't careful because the reality is I masked this canvas too. And I cut masking tape on the canvas and there are no holes because I have feathered touch. <laughs> and also I have the technique down. So. So it is what it is. Let's move on to number three. This one's an important one because I think sometimes people forget. We do like to get paid for our work. <laughs> we do what we do because we love it, but the reality is we live in a cash-based society. If we don't have money, we can't buy the materials to make more art. We can't live, and if we can't live, or if we're homeless, or we're, we are unable to create art that hopefully impacts life and the world. And I mean, one of my goals, or one of the things that happened just last week, one of, my, one of the people who bought one of the pieces from me called me and said, you know what, every time I walk in the room where your art is hung, it brings a smile to my day, and I start the day off right. And I thought, what, what an amazing compliment. It made my week just from hearing that because in order to affect somebody with your art like that, that's just, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I want to positively affect people or make them think or feel. It's all about emotions. Anyways, don't forget, value your artists. You know, I'm gonna uh, harp on this for another second. Is that, you know, we spend a lot of time perfecting our craft it's just like a doctor who went to school for eight years. And uh, I believe it's the same level of significance. A doctor can save your life, but so can art. Imagine a world without art, without music, without paintings, without poetry, without movies. What would life be? We would be fucking robots. Appreciate artists because they bring that something extra into this world. Let's move on. I promise not to harp on it anymore. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Number four, we are always learning and taking inspiration from things. I think most artists, except for the ones who have no, they don't have latitude. They, 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 they get good at one thing and they don't ever experiment outside of that, the product of their success in a particular thing and they don't branch outside. I think it's important to experiment. It's important to learn, stay up to date with the times and show your range. You know, For those of you who follow my, my art, you'll see that my range is wide reaching. I can paint lots of different styles, and I really enjoy experimenting in different things. It's hard for me to stay with one style for like three, four paintings in a row. I get bored, 
if my creativity feeds on the change of things. So when I do one painting that's one style, then I jump to a different style. It, it just, this is why my creativity is always flowing because I don't just stay with one thing. So let's move on. I think we're on number five. <coughs> this is kind of to the effect of number three, getting paid for our work, but materials are expensive, right? Uh, the canvases uh, can be extremely expensive. I do have a two uh, by one and a half meter canvas here because I was t going to paint. I, did, I had this nude model who I did paint a picture of and I just finished. I need to varnish the edges of it, but the image should go up on the gallery's Instagram shortly. Can't Stop Art Gallery on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I was going to paint... Uh, one of the photos we had of her laying down on the bed naked and but I decided that the piece is so large I don't really want to <laughs> hang that in my house and look at it every day I know that sounds weird to say but uh, you know it also would only have a certain audience as a potential customer because it's such a large piece I'm sure it would go for in the tens of thousands of euros so we did a different piece with her posed and you can see her breasts in the piece. But it's really cool. I did a Francois Neely style. Anyways, check for it on Instagram. It will be up shortly. Um, but yeah, materials cost a lot of money. I go through certain things all the time. I use uh, small plastic cups to mix paint, especially when I'm doing liquid acrylic techniques. I use tongue depressors to mix my paint. Um, I go through paper towels because I get paint everywhere. No matter how hard I try to keep my place clean, you know, and I paint my house. So it's the best studio for me because I have a really cool view. I have the doors uh, open in my living room. So I have this great view to look at with the doors open, a nice breeze, and I couldn't ask for a better place to paint, but I get paint everywhere, so I go through paper towels. Anyways, this is not what the video is about. <laughs> Let's move on. So, number six. It's taken years to master our craft. When you look at a piece of artwork, that came from trial, error, experience. Um, it's not always that we try something and we get it right on the first go. And if we do, it's because we've had so many years of trying other things that shapes our understanding. You know, our, the, the, and there's so many different things we need to understand. The relationships between color, values of light and dark, how light or uh, life is imitated in art, whether we're going for realism or surrealism, or if we're trying to do something impressionistic or abstract, all of these different things take time to develop our skills, understanding how the brush works or in relation to the amount of water you use or if you mix paint with this, does it equate to this? Can you get this technique from doing this? And obviously I could speak hours on art techniques because that takes a lot of time to master. And I guess that kind of feeds back into making sure that you value your artist. And again, it doesn't matter what field they're in. If they make music, then they spend how many hours sitting and working with samples. And it's not just understanding the software to create the music or understanding the instrument. It's the hours they spend coming up with different chord prog progressions, coming up with different uh, arrangements. Uh, it's the amount of time an actor spends to get into their role. It, you name it, it doesn't happen overnight. And when you just imagine the product and you say, this took three hours to make, or this took 40 hours to make, or this took one month to make, you have to value it as a whole because any other job in life that is in the non-creative field, you are valued as a whole. If you work in uh, programming, right, and you know a programming language very well, the reality is that it took you years to master this, and if you are a master of that programming language, you make a lot of money. Not because it takes you an hour to code a, some software, or a few hours to do this or that or whatever. In fact, you probably can do it very quickly because you became a master at it. But you are paid well because you took the time to become a master at it. And this is true for every field. Anyway, let's move on. 
So I guess number seven, maybe this goes without saying, but your support means the world to us. If you, you, our friends and families don't support our endeavors within the arts, they don't share our pictures with their friends, it's very difficult for us to become more well-known in the art field, which, and this is, again, not just about paint. This is any budding person in the creative, in the art world, and it's not just about painting. Support your friends, your family, etc. Don't... You know, I, I read this article that said Kim Kardashian released a perfume. She had nothing to do with it, right? She didn't go and pick out the different things that were put inside the, the perfume. She just put her name on the perfume. It was released. It sold I don't know how many millions. And I don't know how many people bought that who don't know Kim Kardashian. And again, it's just a perfume where they paid her to attach her name to it. Why don't you support your friends? Go to your friends' gigs. If one of your friends is a musician, go to their gig. If one of your friends is an artist, buy one of their pieces. If one of your friends is a comedian, go to his show. If one of your friends is an actor, help them read lines. Go to one of the film festivals. If they make music, buy their music. Don't ask for it for free. If they're a DJ, go to their events. Why do we support people that we don't even fucking know, but we don't support the people in our lives that would support us? That, and if you say, well, wait, they don't support me. Be the person you want to be in this world. Don't be the person that some negativity can create, right? Anyways, guys, that's my rant. I know today's episode wasn't all about funny jokes. I'll see. Maybe there's a place I can put a meme or two in here. But, yeah, this was a serious topic. It's something near and dear to my heart. I am friends with a lot of creatives. And I am a firm believer that you have to support those in the creative field because so many people undervalue it. Anyways, guys, much love. This video is all about love. It's saying respect and love the arts. The arts are what make this world beautiful. It's not just paintings. It's not just music. It's not just acting. It is everything. That makes us humans. That makes us real. That makes us able to love. Support your artists, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Please share it with your friends if you enjoyed it or you think they might learn something. Until next time, I'm out. Whoops.